Now we move to the integral questions in the part one of the exam scheme. We have to find the antiderivative of a given function. We must remember the rules for antiderivatives. If you cannot remember them or if you're not thorough with antiderivative, please watch the entire lesson explanation on antiderivative. You can find the link in the description. Now I'll use the power rule over here. Integral power rule means the x power increases by one and it divides by that. It is just the inverse or the opposite things of derivatives. So it will be 3x power 5 by 5 minus negative sign remains. Here it's x power 1, it becomes 2 by 2. And then we need to add a constant of integration, c. This is very important. So this is the correct answer. Same thing over here. It will be 4 by 4 minus what if there is no term. In derivatives, we dissolve this, make it 0. But here we have to add an x because we're doing opposite. Because the derivative x would be 1, right? Now for 1, that means it's just a constant. The integral will be x. So we write minus x plus c. That's how we solve this. But if you have square root, it's the same concept, only that it will be x to the power half. And over here, we will take this to the above, it will be minus 4. And now we use the power rule, it will be 3 x half plus 1 will be 1.5 or 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2. Now what happens over here is this will remain in the derivative the denominator. This will go up. So it basically becomes 2x power 3 by 2. That's the thing. And here what do we have? It will be x minus 4 plus 1 will be minus 3 divided by minus 3. So when you simplify this, you will have 2x 3 by 2 plus x 3 minus 3 by 3. Or you can write this as 2 this is square root and any time when you have divided by any number that will be that particular radical over here since it's two we don't write it's understood it's a square root and over here x cube plus what happens here is you can take this down to be three x cubed so this would be the answer so same concept is used over here as well but here when you take this half up it will be negative half so these are the answers Okay, now you can see they have not simplified so much. But this is also correct. It's not wrong. They have stopped over here itself. The only reason I did this is this might also be your option. You never know if this is not there and they have given you this. Please do try this one out by yourselves and then check for the answers. Here you don't have a quotient rule in integral. But you need to simplify them. Divide x half. This is denominator. So minus 2 by 3. And here you just take it to the above, it will be, basically there's no term. So it's 0 minus 2 by 3. So it will be minus 2 by 3. Or when you bring it up, the power changes to negative. Then you need to use the power rule. What about sine and cosine? Always remember here, when you integrate sine 2, it will be minus cos x. And over here we have plus sine x plus c. Same way you can solve that by yourselves. These are the answers. Remember, we need to simplify and then solve it up in these fractions, you know, uh, rational functions. Now, these are already simplified. You can't simplify anything, okay? If you remember the formulas of integrals, then you will know this is secant x. 2 remains, 2 secant x. This over here is sine inverse. So, arc sine means sine inverse. 4 remains, it's a constant, plus c sine inverse or arc sine now remember in your option if there is arc cos that means it's cos inverse now this is tan because we know derivative of tan is secant squared so we it's the inverse of it over here we need to first simplify this let's simplify cos by sine that will be cot and over here we have one by sine so this is basically cotangent into cosecant x and x and four dx. What is the integral of cotangent and cosecant? We remember cosecant into cotangent is cosecant, right? It's csc plus c and don't forget the constant. It's 4 cosecant plus c. You can see that's the answer. Now I forgot to write it's minus. Whenever you have c over here, it's minus. Okay. This is minus. How to remember that? Whenever your answers are c, it will always have a negative sign in the answer. So it's good that I made that mistake. You guys, please don't do that in the exam. 
and please do try these by yourselves individually solve them up and here are the answers these are pretty simple here these functions are interesting because there's a rule in uh, integrals if the denominator and the numerator are related to each other in the sense if I have this derivative on the top now if I derive x squared what happens I'll get 2x right now here I can rearrange this and write it in terms of 2x so what I do is instead of writing 4 I can write 4 into 2x divided by x squared plus 4 and I know if I derive x squared plus 4 I'm going to get 2x this constant keep it outside to leave it this much part becomes ln magnitude of whatever is in the denominator x squared plus 4 this is the rule of integral so whenever you see the denominator and compare the above and if you can relate them then you can easily use this so over here as well what is the derivative of sine it's cos so just write ln sine x now don't think over here also it's about ln no this there's no x over here it should have been at least x the number can be rearranged that's fine but there's no x term in the uh, top but when you look at this there is 4x squared plus 4 you can remember tan inverse so you can see remove the coefficient and then you can do this as tan inverse okay this will be tan inverse now uh, this 4 is removed out and this is constant 3 right 3 and 4 is removed you will have 1 by x squared plus 1 that is tan inverse x and over here we have got same answer so these are the answers uh, yeah I've written it correctly don't forget to write the plus c same way do solve the others even over here this is natural logarithm magnitude of e power x plus 3 please try these by yourselves now I will show you the calculator method now before doing the calculator method you need to know these all are related to differentiation isn't it because if I say x to the power 2, if I differentiate it d by dx, the answer is 2x. Now here what happens is this is given as the question. Integral of 2x will be x squared. Why? Because x power 2 by 2 and 2 and 2 cancels. This is the answer. So they are inverse of each other and they are related to each other, right? Now when we derive this particular equation, we must get this, isn't it? If we derive it, we must get the answer via the question basically. So what we can do is, we can derive all the options and match it with the question. So it must be true. I will come and do this problem in a minute. Let me take a simpler problem which we had at the beginning. It will be easy to understand then we will move to a difficult problem. Now imagine these are the four options and I will take this question over here. First step, to make it easy, instead of starting to derive all the four options, let's take the question here. x cube minus 2. Sorry, you need to bring it down. Minus 2. Now, assume an x value. Calculate this at any particular x value. I will take 1.5. It's already saved. So, the answer is 11 by 8. Now, better to write it over here. At x is equal to 1.5, the answer was only the function, not the integral. 11 by 8. This is the answer. And now what you need to do is you need to start deriving all these four options at x is equal to 1.5 and match with 11 by 8. Now if you're thinking, oh, we have this integral symbol, why don't we use that? But we need definite integral. It's specific limit. It's a definite integral. We don't have any uh, definite integral sim values over here, so we cannot use this. So we have to do the other way around. Assume a x value to the given question, only the question over here, not the integral. Find the answer. Now derive all the four. That is by shift and dy by dx. I will start with this option. You need to type it out over here entirely. 3 by 5. I have typed it out over here. Now what about the constant value? I can write any digit or I can leave it. Why? Because when I derive any constant, say the c is 8. What happens with the derivative? It's 0, right? So this doesn't make a difference. I'll keep this 8 for now. And I'll take the x value 1.5. Now this doesn't match over here. So this is not the correct option. But one second. Let me just remove this. Plus 8. I'll just remove it out. And it's the same answer. But it doesn't match this particular question. But over here that constant doesn't make any difference at all. So now change this out. 
let the x value be the same only over here you need to change it out to this particular question so over here we have minus 2x and the power is 4 and we have 1 by 4 1 fourth now when we make this equal to is it matching yes it's 11 by 8 only one of your option will match there is no other value that will match because if two values matches then that means there are two answers that cannot be it'll be only one specific answer imagine you get directly at the beginning itself it's fine but otherwise you need to do until the answer matches so you will definitely get one answer but you need to do it properly if you have trigonometric functions please make sure you put this into radian mode and then do it that's the only thing over here and let's do another last problems over here which look difficult this one i'll just do it over here you will have to first write this value as it is press on or you can just clear your calculator now use the fraction symbol type it out now once you have typed it out choose a x value i'll calculate at 1.5 and I've got this 1.6693 so here we need to know all the four options now we have the options over here all you need to do is shift dy by dx I'll put the correct answer itself directly alpha x minus 3 e is over here shift and ln uh, minus alpha x don't put any constant you can put doesn't make any difference I'll put the x value 1.5 and we're getting the same answer you can try with others it won't match now, if it's ln, it's over here. Don't worry about this magnitude symbol. If you want the magnitude symbol, I'll show you where it is. Shift and HYP, you'll get the magnitude symbol. But generally, over here, it's an X, so don't worry about it. Just avoid taking any X value that uh, makes it negative. That's it. Take a 1.5, it's fine. So that's how we solve this integral, antiderivative part. Now, please try to remember the formulas and solve it by using the formulas itself. But somehow you just can't remember the formula. You just are frozen, you know, in the exam. Then try to use the calculator method. It's good to know different methods. Only when the options are given, the calculator method can be used.